Hello students, in this video we'll discuss integrating products of trigonometric functions to different powers when those trigonometric functions are sine and cosine. That's a lot to unwrap, but in particular we're just going to study integrals that look like this. The sine of kx, the cosine of lx dx, in a special case when either k or l are odd. And we're going to consider only, so this is the first case, this is the major case. Major case is either K or L are odd, like 1, 3, 5, 7, etc. Right? In this case, we'll use you will use one of two things. You'll either use the fact that sine squared of x is 1 minus cosine squared of x or that cosine squared of x is 1 minus sine squared of x. So you're going to either use one of these two Pythagorean identities. So these are, are identical to these are just the Pythagorean identities. And let's see how this pops up in an example. Two examples, maybe. So here's the first example. Let's find the integral of sine cubed of x cosine to the fourth of x dx. Again, we're in a situation where one of the exponents of sine or cosine is odd, three is an odd number. So what we're going to do is we're going to split off some of the factors of sine. So the odd, one of the odd terms, you split off factors of that. So we split factors from the odd power term. Okay. So this integral over here is exactly equal to the integral of the sine of x times sine squared of x times cosine to the fourth of x dx. Now I use this Pythagorean identity over here, right over here. So this becomes the integral of sine of x. And then sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared of x. And then I have a cosine to the fourth of x dx. Now we can make a u substitution here. So we can let u, let u be cosine of x, then du is negative sine of x dx. So my integral becomes the integral of, well I have sine of x dx, that's the same as negative du, so we have a negative du, I have a cosine to the fourth, that's u to the fourth, and I have a cosine to the sixth, that's minus u to the sixth, and then a negative du, so that's going to be the integral of u to the sixth minus u to the fourth du, and that's going to be u to the 7 over 7 minus u to the 5 over 5 plus c. Of course, u is cosine, so this is exactly equal to cosine to the 7th of x over 7 minus cosine to the 5th of x over 5 plus c, and there's your antiderivative. Let's see another example of this. Okay. Let's look at this example, the integral. Let's look at maybe a simpler example over here. Let's look at the integral of sine to the tenth of x and then times cosine of x. Cosine of x. Let's just do it to the single power. Uh, let's make it more interesting. Let's do it to the fifth power of x dx. Now, of course, I take the odd power. We split from the odd power. So I'm going to use this relationship now over here. So I can write this as the integral of sine to the tenth of x times cosine to the fourth. Now cosine to the fourth is going to be 1 minus sine squared of x squared. So this term over here is exactly equal to cosine to the fourth. So this term over here is just cosine to the fourth of x. And then times what? And then times cosine to the fifth of x. Well, now I have a single cosine of x. Cosine of x dx. Now, of course, what will this be? So by a little bit of algebra, we see that this is equal to the integral of sine to the tenth, tenth of x, and then 1 minus twice the sine squared of x plus the sine to the fourth of x times cosine of x dx. And now the key feature here is that if I let u, if we let u be the sine of x, then du is exactly equal to just cosine x dx. So with my u substitution, this becomes the integral of u to the 10th, and then minus 2u to the 12th, and then plus u to the 14th du. 
And so what that gives us is that it'll be u to the 11 over 11, but we know what u to the 11 is. u to the 11 is going to be sine. So I'm going to have a sine to the 11 x over 11. And then over here, we're going to divide by 13, so it's going to be minus 2 over 13 sine of x to the 13th power. And then when I do the 14, I'm going to get a 1 over 15 sine of to the 15th power of x plus a constant c, and there's your antiderivative. So in either of these cases, if I, as long as I had one odd power of either sine or cosine, I was able to use either of the Pythagorean identities. In the case where they're both odd, the exact same thing works out. Thank you very much.